All right. Um, and if Veronica doesn't come back, one thing I forgot on the quarterly or the agenda is an EMS update. Um, but if she doesn't come back, we'll forego that part. All right. So I guess we're going to start with the budget reviews and we can go with the fire department. Have most of you had a chance to look at the fire department budget? I mean, we seem to be on pace with where we should be, and I, I don't see any glaring. Um, some lines are over budget, some lines are under budget, but it appears to be balancing out well. Um, I don't know if I have an extra one with me here. No, I don't have okay. extra one. One, because we break out the repairs now per vehicle, it used to be just in a general category, but on the um, our rescue truck, that's abnormally high and that's more of an anomaly than a norm. Um, we had to have some work done on it, had to go back to the, um, basically the manufacturer and in the process of trying to get the seat repaired and the light tower repaired, which we thought was just a, a light bulb replacement and a bad shock. It turned out that the light tower had the motherboard in the base unit go bad and the light head was discontinued and we could not get a replacement light head. And so then the option was to go to LED, but then you can't mix and match LED and non-LED. So basically it was a light head upgrade and a brand new seat. Um, and so those two items alone were close to 10 grand of that repair. Um, and then there was also the body work, which was um, yes. caused by tire chain failure. So that that's not normal, but it's at 17,000 right now. Yeah, it's just... Any questions on the fire? See anything? Issues? All right, we're gonna look at the ambulance one real quick. bills have gone out, but I think here I see that at least as of March, and it could have came in, These all these numbers are through March. Um, Callis still has a chunk of money, and Marshfield has a chunk of money. And whether it came in yet, I don't know, because we present numbers that the board has reviewed, and we stopped at the end of March. Yep. What's going on uh, with about um, well, three quarters of the way down the two transfers from capital to operating and from ambulance to operating? Um, those are we do that um, every every month. All of our ambulance income comes in, and then we split it um, 
25.75. So 25 goes to um, pay uh, ambulance billing, paramedic intercepts, and um, what's the other one? I've drawn a blank. And then the rest goes to capital. Right. Oh, con uh, contingency. I take that back. Contingency. 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 That's right. Okay. We pay all the other stuff first. Then what's left gets split 2575. Once contingency hits its max, then we no longer can contribute to contingency, and it all goes to capital. Okay, so that's 4990. No, actually, both of those are transferred to operating. Right, because we pay for paramedics. So that's a 25%. Yes. Okay. So, but that, that money comes yeah. out over the top, but we have to transfer it from ambulance savings to our checking account to pay for paramedic intercepts, ambulance billing, and um, that's it. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. Make yeah. Sure ambulance. Up. Yeah, paramedic intercepts and ambulance billing get paid off the top. Mm -hmm. And then what's left gets split 25 75 mm -hmm. So I think what you're looking at is the transfer you're saying they're from ambulance revenue to checking? I'm looking at uh, 4980 and 4990, and they are labeled transfer from capital to operating and transfer yeah. from okay. AM to OPER. Right. Yeah, so the, the what... transfer from capital to operating is when we make a motion to purchase whatever it is, new computer printer, mm -hmm. $4,000. Mm -hmm. And we make that a capital expense. Mm -hmm. All of our checks get written out of operations checking. Mm -hmm. We don't have a checkbook for capital or any other thing. So we then have to move the money over to cover those expenses. Okay. This is just to track it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And so, like, as an example, one of them that we picked up on last month that we noticed we didn't make the transfers, we made them on paper but we physically didn't move the money from one account to the other. Mm -hmm. And so like donations, as an example, that number is high right now, but there are things we paid for with the holiday um, gift drive we do and that kind of stuff that was paid for out of operations checking, but now the money has to move over to take its place. So, um, moving along, I guess, um, to date this year, the ambulance has brought in 145655 dollars, I should say, since last July, not calendar year, fiscal year. Through March 31st. Through right. the end of March. Or technically March 26th. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, then on the uh, capital plan, um, I was waiting to get one last price to be able to close out what it was that I got. And I know I'm cutting it close to that 25000 that we're allowed to spend for capital every year. And it might be a little bit over that, but I don't have that number. And it's really because of the radios. I purchased two radios last May, or even before May, thinking they would be in for last year's budget. Well, they didn't come in until this year's budget. So that, you know, it's when we get the bills is when we got to account for it, unfortunately. So um, that, I know I'm getting close. Exactly where it's going to fall, I don't know, but I know I got to technically come and see you folks if I exceed twenty-five thousand. Um, and then on the call review, um, I did something different. I tried to go back to fiscal year and present two years because I know they wanted to see like historically last year to this year, 
So I tried to do the same time period, July 22 to March of 23, and then July of 23 to March of 24. And so you can see the side-by-side -side comparisons of where we are with going to Calais, Mont East Montpelier, Woodbury, Cabot, wherever. And then um, I also broke it down separately just for the first three months of this year, um, which I think Veronica was gonna kind of just mention it. So you could see where we, want, where we are this year um, to date. And um, for this calendar year, um, we've had 132 medical calls and 63 fire calls. And some of the fire calls, there's an increase between Callis and East Montpelier, and it's primarily driven by um, us helping them more with lifting and be, just being there to support them and get stuff and help them where you know we're doing that more often and they're also going to reciprocate by coming with us more to fire calls because you know we all recognize that firefighting is a very dangerous occupation and usually when the fire department goes out the ambulance doesn't always come along and I'm looking to try and change that and have them come out because I hate to say it accidents can happen and, and it would be nice to have an ambulance there to be ready in case one of us gets hurt. Any questions on the call logs? Okay, next item, new truck update. I'll let you talk about that one, Paul. Well, okay. You have good news and bad news. Bad news is we were, we wanted the truck here for tonight's meeting, <laughs> and, but it didn't get here. <laughs> the truck is coming Tuesday at two o'clock. It's coming Tuesday, two o'clock. And it will be delivered and we'll, we'll be practicing with it Tuesday afternoon. But if anybody, any, any of the members want to come in when it, when it arrives, you're certainly are welcome to come down. And, uh, but at two o'clock, around two o'clock, he's, he's driving it up from uh, the Albany way. So he'll be up here in the afternoon, this coming Tuesday. There's two parts, there's two little brackets that they're waiting for it. I told him today, we, you gotta get it up here. <laughs> Is he tracking it on Google Maps or something so we can see when it crosses no. over the border? <laughs> I'll ask him. I'll ask him, yeah. I'm sure I won't get a good response. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's that's the update. In, um, because it's a nice looking truck. I can show pictures of it, actually, if you're, if you're, if you're interested in seeing it. The Eclipse tied it up. The what? The Eclipse tied it up. Yeah, right. Yeah. They, could, they tried to get out. Yeah, that's right. They tried to get out on Monday, but... The roads didn't allow it. So that's all I got for that. Okay. And the other thing, and I know we, and I bring it up again because I know we might have another repair coming up. And I know we, we paid for several things to fix on this building that we found out later should have been brought to East Montpelier's attention and that there's funding to support some of these repairs with this building in particular and how that works with Calis, East Montpelier and Fire Department. We, I've never seen anything that says 60-20-20 or 100% East Montpelier and we're 80. I don't know how the breakdown works, but we do have a... a I think it's a decent um, wood pellet repair coming up um, where the firebox is totally burned out. And it's the estimates we got are four to $5,000. And um, we just want to know how to proceed. I mean, we're gonna make arrangements to have it fixed, but then how we, who's funding what share, 
and how that's going to take place. And if we can figure that out, even moving forward for future projects along those lines. Why isn't it the one third, two thirds? Doesn't it fall under the one third, two thirds? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I mean, as far as I know. I right, but do we is... help? What do we comp uh, contribute a, a portion of that to? And I don't know. That's so I bring it up as a, more of a question, so that we know. You talking about firebox? What's that? Yeah. I don't think Callis is involved. Oh, well, they own the building. So you own part of the building? Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought we paid a third of the expenses for the upkeep. So you're, you're not quite. I'm not sure. Okay. I I, that's the way I was understood. In the two years I've been here, it hasn't come up, yeah. so I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that. That, yeah. that is it my. Seems to make sense. That's my hot take on it. Uh, and you know, we've seen from recent events that it's a good idea to go back and look at the documents and see what they say. And since we are moving right along, and I know EMS is not going to be here to give any kind of update that quick, um, I know there's been discussion about the interlocal and possibly revisiting that again. And I don't know if there's still talk about doing that. I'm sorry, I forgot to think about that. Yeah, I do think that thing needs to be fixed, but we seem to be getting along. Could we put, just put it off to the next meeting? I'll try to pay attention. I, I'm trying to remember what the issue was. I, I, it seems to me we need to have one process for if somebody wants to get out of the agreement and another process for if somebody wants to change the agreement. Right. Um, but I didn't think much beyond that. Um, when's our next meeting? August. So would it help if I wrote something up and made a proposal for that meeting? For a right, change? but if you... Uh, I, I don't even remember the details of the interlocal in my head. I'd have to go look it up. But there's that window that you have to make your claim that you want to open it, count backwards, whatever it is, two months, three months. I forget. I, so, can't remember, I could be wrong, but what I think I remember from the last meeting was that this was going to be something that each select board worked on independently at independent select board meetings and then brought to each other. Uh. You made your memory's much better than mine. I think that sounds familiar. I oh, believe that we didn't do it. Did you? I no. We didn't. <laughs> uh, and my memory is that um, what you were wanting to modify in was um, uh, to change back. I think a modification that Callis had asked for some years ago. Uh, originally, the agreement just continued unless somebody said right. we want to change it, and now it's worded so that it has to be approved by the select boards to continue in force every once in a while. And then the question is, well, what if we forget to do it? Uh, yeah. So you wanted to just go back to having it but in, was, in the, effect until the, somebody the says, change, hey, we want to come back. The, my concern was that when they changed the language, I wasn't there, so I don't know, but it looks like they mushed together two processes mm -hmm. that should be separate. One is, we'd like to propose a change to the agreement. Let's talk about it. The other is, we, we quit. In that case, you want a process where we give you several years notice, or at least a year's notice, if not more, and, and how that works. And I think those are two different processes. But somehow, when this got written, they, they pushed them together. And I think we ought to break them apart and say, let's go back to the old process for how, if you want to leave the agreement, that I thought worked well, and come up with a different process for how, if we want to make a change to Mm -hmm. Okay, and in terms of the timing of the discussion, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right that there's there's a a window for making the modifications, and uh, I don't think there's anything to keep us from discussing how we want to modify it uh, well ahead of that window opening up. Oh yeah, so yeah. that we're prepared when that window opens up to go forward with something that that we agree on. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll make a commitment to put it on an agenda and we'll work on it. Would you please do the same? <laughs> <laughs> um, Does it make sense yeah. with the way I, I told you? But I, yes. I'm, I'm happy to try to write something up for you guys to react to. That, that would be would that, better. Yeah. So why don't we take the ball then? Thank and you. And we'll give it to you. Thank okay. you. Okay. No.
Anything else to come before us? Nothing? I, just a clarification. Um, asking to open up the contract. Um, that, that, I, I'm a, what I just heard, um, if you guys have a come up, come together and come up with some kind of a, a plan that you want to implement uh, as a change, I, I don't think it's the intent of that contract is that you guys would get that together. You asked to have the contract open and then throw that at us that moment. That, that opening the contract, there, there's a time frame from the time you ask us you, that you ask to have this open, and there's a period of time before that can be open. And I think those changes, I think, have to be, I think, um, they just can't be thrown at us. Or we can't throw stuff at you, you know, at tonight's meeting. Hey, we want to change this. Uh, all of a sudden, we. Oh, agree. Yeah. Agree. I mean, we're all three a, of us are partners, and if we want to make a change, yeah, we yeah, can give you I think it's the, it's the ability to open that, the, the notice of when you, that you want to open that contract as a time frame. Right. That has to be met. Yeah. That's the key, I think. Okay. Right now, without that contract, I don't think anybody knows what it is. I'd like to see the three entities form a committee and work together on it. One or two people on each board. And then that way, everybody's on the same page. And everybody can put their ideas in so we know we see each other's time. Committees can make board meetings more effective. Yes, that's just my personal opinion. Are you volunteering? I'll volunteer as uh, as a select board member. All right, I'll volunteer. Are you yeah. asking the uh, fire department to have representation sure. too? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure we'll find three people to sit on that. Well, I think I think the board's going to decide it. Right, right. They want to do that. Right. Yeah. I, I think our, the same our select board needs to decide on yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So you're taking two people from each select board and two people from the fire department. Can we just take one from each? One. One. That's from fine. Each, it doesn't one. make any that's difference. That's good. To me. One. As long as there's representative from all three groups, I okay. just think it's better dialogue all the way around. We don't waste each other's time, and we have to make it an official at a select board. For each one of us, we'll be fire department, so be it. So we'll put that on, on, on our agenda for the next board meeting to bring that up, see if that's possible, that the board accepts that. Which I don't know why they would. You mean accepts the formation of the committee? Right. We right. can't just form the committee and work on it ahead of time? I, I would not say, I would not commit the fire department to that, no. The board would have to be the one to do that. I would like to see that they would. However, we I can't. I don't I don't see us not doing it right that way. But the board's going to be the one to vote on that. It's the fire department board. Yeah. Right. Oh, I right. see. Okay. We met we meet on uh, oh god January Wednesday before the first Tuesday. The last Wednesday. The last of Wednesday. the month is your board meeting. Yeah. So it'll be because that's that's a, that's a big change from what be the first we've done, Wednesday of May. And, and I don't want to just jump into this thing. And Jay may have some other opinion, and, and uh, other board members no, may feel just, they want to speak at a board level rather than here uh, on something like that. Don't you want something to react to? But, though? but I mean, the thing of it is, all else. we're talking about is bringing an idea mm -hmm. yeah, just, to just, the three boards. I don't think there needs to be a motion officially for any of the organizations. To just unofficially form a commitment. We're just talking about creating something that everybody can react to. I think it's good for us. Well, I think, and, and again, no if you do that, you got to open the contract. I believe that there, the language a, that we're, describe, we're talking about changing doesn't change the terms of the length of time for notice that, I, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it would affect opening the contract or the, the length of time of notice. I think the language is would not. Is that is that correct? 
But when the prior to the notify that there would be some sort of mutual yeah. understanding that this was the thing that we were hoping to do and then we could start the formal process. Yeah, we start the process once we at least have something that we can talk about, something concrete to talk about. And I think you're proposing just three of us getting together to come up with something that we can just give to everybody and say, what do you think? Let's use this but, as, as a starting point for right. the discussion. But if, if you folks as a select board on your own want to sit there and discuss interlocal and things that you want to see changed, that can happen at any time. Right. And you can have your little discussions, right. your meeting, make up your, your list, your meeting, and then the when it's called into question, you bring your list. We might have changes we want to see at this point. And then each small player has their own changes, and we hash them out and come to an agreement. You know, and that's you know when meetings are born. But yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you can't discuss on your own what things you'd love to see changed with the interlocal. And when the time comes, we have a meeting and hash it out. The committee of three can probably get it done and then just present it to the main units. Like this, like one yeah. for Calus, one for East Buffet, one for the fire department. Once they get their thing together, they <laughs> go back out, whatever. Well, I mean, I want to stress that it's important that all three groups sit down when decisions are being made. Because one of the things, sometimes we feel like, you know, I hate to say it, but the the deck can sometimes be stacked against one group or another based on whether it's separate meetings or private you know agendas and all of a sudden two groups get together and say this is what we're doing and then it gets force fed on the third group and you know we want to make sure that we all agree with the changes and what they are so that we're all happy and not where you know all of a sudden I'm working with East Montpelier saying that you know we think Cal should do this and then we all vote and Callus gets stuck holding what's left, you know, and that's not right either. But I think all you're describing would prevent that from happening. That's yeah, exactly that's what I'm <laughs> prescribing, so it would not happen. Right. So we come up with, whoever it is, comes up with some language, disseminates it to everybody, gives right. everybody lots of time to think about it and talk about it, right. and then we all come together and talk. It's just easier when you have something in front of you to yeah. react to than, you know, kind of a vague idea. Right. Because, I mean, I knew, I knew now that interlocal agreement had some language that was kind of confusing. And so you weren't quite sure, when does the date start? How long? You know, it's, so clarifying a lot of that stuff would be helpful, I think. So I guess we done? Want to make a motion to have the meeting? Sure. Well, we don't have the ambulance people here, so we did the best we could do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for coming. Okay. Yes. Thank you. No, I have no other questions. Thanks for preparing all this. Walk yeah. us through it. Uh, well, thanks for preparing all this and walking us through it. Yeah. yeah.